Hi and welcome to the KSA Tech YouTube channel. In this tutorial we'll be learning how to download 3D datasets from Digimap and using them to create a surface in SketchUp for site analysis. The first thing we're going to want to do is open Digimap in your browser and log in with your university email and password. This will bring you to the home page of Digimap. To download information from Digimap we're going to click on Ordnance Survey and then Data Download. Once you've selected Data Download you can now pick the type of data you want to download. For this example, we'll be using building height data and contour data. Building height data can be found under the OS master map section and comes in DWG format, which you can see by clicking the info button next to the building height selection box. The contour data can be found under the land and height data section. For this example, we'll be using OS terrain 5 contours. Bear in mind that you can only download a maximum of 5 km squared area of contour data, but it's not advisable to download this large amount of data as it's very heavy and may cause programs to crash when we try to import it. For this reason, I recommend using 1 km grid reference squares to keep in mind how much data is being selected. You can do this by clicking the Show Availability grid to the right of the screen and clicking the Reference tab. Currently these options are greyed out but will be available when we search our location using the search tool. To use the search tool, click the search button at the top of the screen and type in a location, postcode or grid reference. For this example, I'll use the postcode of our building. We can now see we can select our 1km grid reference lines. Make a section of the area that you want using the draw rectangle tool. You should now have the option to add your chosen area to your basket. If the button is greyed out, make sure you've selected Building Height and OS Terrain 5 contours with a tick box. Once you click Add to Basket, you'll be presented with an option of the format you want your download in. For this example, we'll be using DWG for both, as we'll be using AutoCAD to stitch together the files before creating the surface in SketchUp. Now name the download anything you wish and click Request Download. When you request download, you will receive two emails, one to confirm your order from Digimap and a second containing a download your data button, allowing you to download your data. This data will come in a zipped file, so extract it any way you want to use it. Once extracted, you should have two folders, one for building height and one for contour information. We'll be importing the contour information first as we need to put it all together before we can lay building heights onto it. We'll need to import them one after the other to make one large site. We can use the GIS data embedded in this file from Digimap to do this automatically. GIS data, or Geographic Information Systems data, relates to real world coordinates and so knows which grids fit where in relation to each other. To begin, open AutoCAD and select Open. Now navigate to the location you extracted your zip download to. Open the contour folder and select the contour file to open. Once opened you'll see a series of red and white lines as well as numbers indicating height. Floating numbers such as this one are spot heights. Numbers on a line show the height of that contour line. Red contour lines are 25 meters apart from each other, whereas white contour lines are 5 meters apart. We can use either one of these to vary the accuracy of the surface we'll be creating later. Now this file is opened, we can import our second piece of contour information. We can do this by going to the Insert tab along the top of AutoCAD and selecting the Import button. Now click More Options and you'll be given the option to navigate to the file you want to import. Once we've selected the file, it's very important we don't hit OK yet. Before we do that, we need to tick this Locate using Geographic Data button, as this is what AutoCAD will use to automatically align our two files together. Without this, we'll have to place it manually, causing inaccuracy and further problems down the line. If you have imported without using the Locate using Geographic Data button, then undo the import and repeat the process and make sure you tick the Locate using Geographic Data box before proceeding. Now repeat these steps with the remaining files to import them, making sure to use the Locate Using Geographic Data box when importing. 
Bear in mind that the more data and the larger area you import, the slower the PC will run and the longer it will take to import another grid square. This is because this data is extremely heavy and puts the PC under stress. Now we've imported all our data and allowed AutoCAD to place our squares together, we can now see we have one large site with our contour information. At this point I'd really recommend saving your file, as if the program does crash it's better to just reopen your save file rather than start the process again. At this point we can consider importing our building height data into our file. If you're using this method to build a reference model, then only import the building height data for the specific area you want, rather than importing data for the whole site, as once again this data is very heavy, and this extra strain on top of the heavy contour information can sometimes cause the program to crash and not respond. If you're intending to use this method to create a 3D terrain study, then it's best not to import building heights at all. In this tutorial, we will be following the steps to create a reference model, so we will be importing building height data, so if you are using this to create a 3D terrain study, feel free to skip slightly ahead and continue once we have imported our building height data. To import the building height data, follow the same steps as before, by going to the insert tab, clicking the insert button, and then clicking more options. Once again, make sure you hit the button to automatically locate the data. Once this data is inserted, it's vital that you avoid rotating the model, as this could cause the program to crash. Now we're going to do some cleanup before we move this data over to SketchUp. If we open up the Layer Properties in the Home tab, we will now hide and freeze the layers that aren't needed. The reason we hide and freeze them is because AutoCAD still draws layers that aren't frozen, and still uses system resources to do this. Freezing them means that it no longer draws these layers and gives us extra speed when trying to work and export the model. For this example, I'm going to be hiding and freezing all layers except buildings, master contour lines, and ordinary contour lines. Now we're going to save this as a separate file, ready to import in SketchUp. At the time of this video's release, there's a bug where you may have to save your file as an AutoCAD 2007 file in order for it to import in SketchUp correctly. So if you have any issues importing the next step, then come back to your AutoCAD file and select Save As, and under the File Type section, select AutoCAD 2007. We hope this bug will be patched shortly, as Autodesk are aware of the issue and are working on a fix. Now we have our separate file ready to import in SketchUp. Now open SketchUp. When you start SketchUp, you're given the option to use a template and to select the units for that template. For this example, it's vital that we use the urban planning template in meters, as the data downloaded from Digimap is almost always in meters when we download it. For ordinary projects, we would use architectural design millimeters, but for this case, as I say, it's vital we use urban planning in meters. Now SketchUp is open, we select File, Import, and find your file you saved from AutoCAD just now. Before clicking Import, we just need to verify that it's going to import our file in meters to make sure everything is as accurate as possible. To do this, click the Options button next to the Import button and make sure under Units that it says Meters. It may take some time to import due to the complexity of the file, but it should complete in the end. Now our model is imported, we can see at the moment our contours are just lines. You should be able to select the individual lines as you see here. If for some reason when you attempt to select the individual lines, it selects the whole of the grid square, we just need to explode it. But first you need to make sure your building height layer isn't visible, otherwise SketchUp will crash. To explode a grid square, select it, right click, and click explode. You should now be able to select individual lines as you see here. Now we'll be creating a surface based on the height of those lines. To do this, we're going to use the drape tool. When we're creating our surface, we don't want our building heights to be involved in the creation of the surface. So we're going to use the Layers tab and make sure our building height layer is hidden before proceeding. By default, you might not have the Drape tool visible. It's available through the Sandbox tool. To turn it on, right click an empty area of the toolbar and make sure the Sandbox toolbar is ticked. If it's not, click on it and then snap it to your toolbar by moving it towards your toolbars. Now select all of your contour lines and select Create Sandbox from Contours. You'll now start to create a surface using selected contours as a mould, similar to the way a vacuum formal works. 
This process may take some time as it's quite intensive. Now we can see our surface has been created. It's very important that you don't move this surface at this point as the contours and surface aren't attached to each other and it will be very hard to realign them once moved out. If you wish to see the surface without the contour lines, just use the layers tab to hide the layers so you can see the surface. Now if we unhide our building layer, we can see our building sitting on top of our surface and aligned in the correct geographically accurate positions. So, thanks for watching this tutorial. Feel free to check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up with videos as they're released. We hope to see you soon, but until then, have a good day.